Hey guys, it's Adrian and today I'm taking a look at this GK75 mechanical keyboard from Skylong. Now this is a 75% layout keyboard and it's using Rose Glacier mechanical switches. There's a couple of unique things about this keyboard. One is that it's using the split type of spacebar and that comes in really handy because if you're typing, no matter where your fingers are on the keyboard, you easily have access to this. It also has two rotatable knobs or dials and that comes in super handy if you're gonna be doing any type of video editing, image editing, or anything that requires any type of slider or fine adjustments. Big thank you to Skylong for sending this out for review, but let's get into it. In the package, we have the Skylong GK75 mechanical keyboard. We have two additional switches, a switch and keycap puller, a USB-A to Type-C adapter. We also have the plate for a standard spacebar if you don't want to use the split spacebar. We also have a USB Type-A to Type-C cable for charging the keyboard and for wired mode and a bunch of additional keycaps. Let's look at the design. So the model I have is the GK75 Ti Gray, and this is with a translucent ABS case all the way through. Now you can see for the keycaps, they're not white, they're kind of like an off-white uh, type of color. And the color scheme reminds me kind of like a pastel type of look you could see. It's a pretty muted type of look for the keycaps. It also comes with some additional keycaps if you want a bit more of a consistent look. And we also have a full length space bar, which you can swap out if you're not a fan of this split space bar. The keycaps are double shot PBT, they are not shine through keycaps and the profile is the OEM profile. The keycaps have a matte finish and they're slightly textured which makes them great to type on and bonus tip if you have kind of oily fingertips like I do, I don't really notice it on these. Due to the translucent ABS case you can see that we can actually make out the plate underneath there along with some other design elements and screws. Here's a side view of the keyboard. So it starts thinness at about three quarters of an inch and then slightly tapers up to about an inch and a quarter. The rear of the keyboard carries along that clear translucent ABS plastic look. And you can see that we have four rubber feet in every corner of the keyboard. And we also have a small one in the center there. Now, if we take a close look in the middle here, we have a switch to switch it from Bluetooth, USB or wired mode and 2.4 gigahertz mode as well. And there's also a switch to switch it from Windows to Mac mode. We also have two stage adjustment for the rear feet. If you're gonna be using the keyboard in wired mode, once you pop in the USB type C cable here, and it is a very snug fit, you can actually thread the cable through this cutout here or route it to the side, pull it out here or on this cutout. So a lot of options there. And there is also a cutout for the 2.4 gigahertz adapter. There's normally 80 keys and one knob, but Skyling has pre-installed an additional knob. The knobs are well built, they're cold to the touch, so there's some form of metal, and you can see they're nicely knurled for easy grippability. Now there are hard stops or increments as you rotate the knob. The GK75 features hot swappable switches and it supports three and five pin switches. There's 4,000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery. There's no QMK or VIA support. So one of the reasons why you may get the GK75 is the ability to have programmable knobs. Now I mentioned earlier that you can have the knobs in six specific or pre-programmed places, which it shows in the manual here. So I have one in the top left corner there, one in the top right corner, and then we also have an additional slot. So you can replace the F12 key and the three keys going down the side right here, which are home, delete, and page up. It's quite easy to remove the knob module and switch and replace it with a regular switch. So to do that, I'm just gonna pop out the knob just like that. And then there's a kind of rubber covering here and I'll just use the keycap puller to just pry that out. And you can see it comes out really easily and it's this type of, you know, really squishy material. With the knob and the covering removed, we're just gonna pull out the switch like you would do with any other type of traditional switch. Get a good hold on here. All right, here's the two switches. So we have the knob module and you can see it has four metal contacts and then we have the regular switch on the left side. And I'm just gonna pop that in right now and pop on the escape key. When you first take the keyboard out of the box, the dials are programmed to adjust the volume up or down. And then if you click it in, it's gonna mute whatever you're playing. Now I've programmed both of these knobs so that the left one here is used to adjust sliders in Photoshop. 
and then the right one is used to go forwards or backwards on my browser. But one thing that I do wish I could program the knob to do is to actually mimic, you know, going up or down on a scroll wheel. Because when I use my video editing program to adjust those sliders, it requires the mouse wheel to be rotated or scrolled up or down. And when I go into the software for the knobs, there is no option to simulate, you know, a mouse scrolling up or a mouse scrolling down. So that's something I wish to see in a future software version. Now I do use the escape button every once in a while. So I've actually programmed this knob to adjust sliders in Photoshop. And if I click it in, it's gonna function as an escape key. So I'm kind of having the best of both worlds where I could have knob functionality and the escape key. One thing that I'd like to see change on the knob is the increment adjustment. So if I'm editing an image in Photoshop and I'm rotating the slider, it goes up in pretty small increments. Of course, you could set that on the software side as well. But since these are hard stops and they have like increments, you know, you can't just kind of flick it and it'll just, you know, really jump or skyrocket the value you're adjusting. So it would be good to adjust the increments or, you know, how much each rotation is or hold a modifier key on the keyboard to increase those type of increments or jumps. But yeah, guys, overall, I'm happy with the knob functionality. I just wish I could simulate a mouse wheel scrolling up or down and the ability to have the increment value adjusted to something higher. So I've reviewed a decent amount of keyboards so far, and I have to say that the Skyline GK75 actually offers one of the more unique and satisfying typing experiences I've had so far. The typing experience has been so satisfying on this so far. It's so tactile. The sound profile that accompanies this pairs perfectly well with it as well. Like you can hear how planted those key presses sound like. It's just a really rewarding typing experience and you're fully aware that you've pressed the key. There's no mistakes here. The keys have a nice bounce back. And again, that matte and textured feel of the keycaps just really helps to solidify the entire typing experience. The keyboard comes in at around 2.3 pounds or one kilogram. So it's super planted when you're typing. So what do I think of the split space bar while typing? Well, when I first started using the keyboard, I thought I had to be mindful, you know, so that my thumb wasn't landing in between the gaps in the split space bar. But after a couple of days of typing, you know, my hands just naturally adjusted and, you know, my left finger would just, uh, or my left thumb would just always hit on this one or land on this one. And then my right thumb would land on either of these. So it's a pretty seamless typing experience, you know, once you get used to it. Now, I also do prefer the sound coming out of the three split space bars versus, you know, the really wide one, which you can also swap in. Another benefit of this split space bar is that the weight or pressure that you place on it is more evenly distributed because on a lot of keyboards with a standard space bar, if you hit it on the extreme right or left end, you know, you may be experiencing a little bit of a wobble or the sound will be a little bit off, but on here, it's pretty consistent all the way through. I've removed the split spacebar plate and this is what it looks like. And they've also supplied a standard or, you know, traditional type of spacebar plate if you want to use the traditional spacebar. I've gone ahead and removed the split spacebar and installed the standard spacebar plate with the standard spacebar. This is what it sounds like. So you can see it's a pretty consistent sound no matter if I hit it right side, middle, or left side. There's a little bit of a wobble, but it's nothing major at all. It's within reason for what I've seen in most keyboards, and it actually sounds pretty decent. Now you can hear, compared to the sound profile coming out of the rest of the keycaps, it definitely stands out, but let's go back to the split space bar and see what that sounds like. So which one do you guys prefer, the sound of the split space bar or the standard? Let me know down below. The sound profile on this is definitely suited, I would say, more to home use because in a shared work or office environment, you're definitely going to hear the sound coming out of this, especially when you're going at it. Gaming on the GK75 was great thanks to the 1000 megahertz polling rate. And even though I'm not gonna be using this primarily as a gaming keyboard, it's good to know that it can handle it. The GK75 features north facing LEDs. I've lowered the lighting in the room just to have the RGB effect show through a little bit better. 
So while the RGB is there, it's definitely not the brightest RGB implementation that I've seen and there are no shine through keycaps, so keep that in mind. Now to adjust the lighting, it's quite simple on this system, you know, function and the down arrow will completely lower the brightness and you can see that's fully off and then function and up will crank it to the brightest setting. We can also reduce the speed of the effect like most other keyboards and then we could really speed that up as well. If you ever wanna turn the backlight off, you would hit function and nine and that just cuts it completely and then function and nine turns it back on again. If you wanna pause the effect, you would hit function and zero and you can see that pauses the effect or resumes it. And we can also do a cycle through different type of preset lighting modes. So you can see I can go through a bunch here. Of course, you have options for solid colors as well if you like that. I think the RGB implementation on here should satisfy most users, but if you're looking for the brightest RGB you could find, this is definitely not gonna be it. It's there, you can see it. It's just a bit more, you know, toned down and tasteful, you know, especially if you're not a fan of having a ton of RGB on all the time. I fired up the driver software for the GK75 and you could see this is what the dashboard looks like. And since we're using this on a Windows computer, we're gonna go to layer one or Windows. And this is where we could, you know, rebind keys and things like that. And you can see also for the space bar, you can actually rebind this so that only one of these functions as a space bar and the other one functions, you know, as uh, something else if you like. Now, what's important here is the dial functionality. So you can see here, if I go to dial, and I'm just gonna clear that configuration, and you can see I could set this to go up, you know, like shift up on the keyboard, and then I'll go to the other one here, uh, delete that, and then set it to go down. And this is how I can have, you know, kind of that fine control in terms of sliders. Now, one of the things I was mentioning is if I go and I try to modify the knob functionality in the top right here, and I go to mouse, these are my options. So right click, left click, middle click, back and advance. And this is how I was able to navigate around websites going forwards and backwards. But what is missing for me is having an option for mouse scroll wheel up and mouse scroll wheel down. That would come in really handy for adjusting sliders and video editing where the arrows are used to you know move through the timeline versus change sliders. If we go into the second tab here, which is LE, these are the list, or this is a list of different type of lighting that you could do on here. And you could see it's quite full featured. And what you would do is when you're in standard, you could go ahead and delete some of these, you know, assign a different type of lighting. Let me just click that. And then this is what you would cycle through on the um, keyboard command. So you can see really a ton of different options. I just wish the software was a little bit more space out and a little bit larger in resolution um, on the computer. Right now I'm using this on a 1080p monitor and that's why it's so large, but on a 4K monitor, it's challenging. There's also some handy keyboard shortcuts. So if you're gonna be using this for gaming, you could just hit function and windows and that's just gonna disable the windows key and then you can just enable it back. Function one and two are reserved for pairing Bluetooth devices and function three is reserved for the 2.4 gigahertz connection. If you wanna use the GK75 with multiple devices, it is possible. So you can see right now I have the keyboard set up or plugged into my computer. If I hit the Windows key, it's gonna pull up the start menu on my computer, but I could easily hit function and space. And then if I hit the Windows key now, it's gonna pull up the voice assistant on my Android phone. And I could just hit function and space again to exit out and I'm back to controlling my computer. All right guys, so can I recommend the Skylong GK75? And this is really such a unique keyboard in terms of the looks with the split space bar, having you know just one knob, two knobs, or up to six knobs. There's really a ton of functionality and versatility with this keyboard. But the most standout feature for me is actually the typing experience because that's what I'm actually gonna be using this most of the time for. It's also such a well-built and solid keyboard. You know, if I try to flex it, there's really no give or room with creaking or flexing or anything like that. It's just a super compact planted keyboard. There's a nice weight to it, you know, coming in at around 2.3 pounds. So if you guys are interested in checking out the Skylong GK75 mechanical keyboard or any of their other type of mechanical keyboards, you can use my promo code DEMCRUMBLIES for 15% off. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think of the Skylong GK75 mechanical keyboard. You know, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the split space bar, you know, the sound profile coming out of that. How do you feel about the knobs? You know, is one knob enough for you? Do you only need it for volume control? or do you see the benefit of having you know, two knobs and potentially up to six knobs 
depending on you know your application for this i'm super curious to hear how you guys would use all those knobs and as always if you found this video helpful please consider liking and subscribing it really does help me out a ton guys and i'll see you in the next one soon